right, we're all set. Okay, so the reason why I chose to do this today was because tomorrow is Mothering Sunday, and I thought this was quite a cute little picture to do for, uh, for Mother's Day, really. Um, you've got a big bird and a baby bird. Um, now, if you want to, you could do more than just two birds. I decided to do two because of the time that we've got today, but if you want to do more than two, oh, sorry, yeah, you can do three or four, perhaps, depending on how many people in your family, maybe. Um, you can put some on the lower branches as well you can choose how many you do. Okay, but I'm gonna to do two today. Um, what I've done with my paper, I've squared up an A4 piece of paper, which means it was um, a bit longer on the top, but I cut it down so it made a square shape. And what I've also done with mine, if I hold it up close to the camera, you can see that I've taped the edges with a bit of masking tape all the way around the edge. Now you don't have to have done this if you don't have any masking tape, that's absolutely fine. I did it because I quite like having, when I do watercolors, sometimes I like to have a nice clean white board around the edge. So we peel that off at the end, okay? Oh, sorry, one more just coming in. Um, but don't worry if you haven't got that, you can either leave a space around the edge, you can draw with a pencil if you wanted to, a line around the edge border, or you can just sort of um, guess where the edge is, or you can just paint right up to the edges of the paper. It's entirely up to you. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah? Okay, great. Thanks for the thumbs up, everyone. That's super helpful because then I know everyone can see and listen and we're all keeping up the same pace, which is good. Okay, so the first thing's first. We're gonna do the drawing bit first of all. So grab yourself a pencil. Okay, and we're gonna start off by drawing the branch that these birds are sitting on, okay? Now you can see that on my painting here, they're sort of halfway across the page. Can you see that? Oops, sorry, one second. Just another couple of people in the waiting room, one minute. Okay, hopefully everyone's in. Okay, so we're gonna draw a slightly curved line all the way across the middle of our page, going horizontally, okay? So we're gonna draw I a I can't pin the um, picture, I can't, it's not working. Um, if you go to three dots in the corner of your, of your screen. it does not I only get the option to chat. Um, I'm not sure why. Can anybody else not see the main screen? Because it's it like, it says it's pinned at the bottom, but it's on gallery view. Um, I'm not sure why that is. Can anybody help out there? Does anybody know the answer to that? You have to come out of gallery view. Okay, come out of gallery view. And to speak of you. Have a go at that. Oh, yeah. Is that working? Yeah, I think so. Thank you everyone for the helper, thank you. Okay, so with your pencil, you're gonna go halfway across. You're going to draw your horizontal branch halfway across. Now branches are very rarely completely straight. So using a ruler won't work for this. You need to have it, you need it freehand, okay? But do it horizontally. I'm gonna make mine slightly sort of bumpy in places because branches do tend to be a little bit bumpy in places. And then I'm just going to sort of branch off up like that. Oh, can you see that? Maybe press a bit harder, sorry. I never know how light it is with the camera and the light coming through the window. It sometimes goes really pale. There we go, can you see that? Yeah, I think you can. Okay, so it's kind of quite a bit of a wavy line, not too wavy, but it's just a branch line that my birds are gonna sit on. You can see the one I did earlier on actually, that's slightly more curved. If you'd rather do that, you can do. Okay, and then just underneath where you started before, you're going to draw another branch. You're gonna basically follow this line all the way to the other side. I'm gonna go slightly narrower as I get towards the other end because obviously the branches get thinner, they get more sort of twig-like as they get towards the end. And then I'm gonna separate it, so I'm gonna go away from it. Because the branch sort of split off here a bit, okay? And inside that sort of split bit, I'm going to draw a little sort of triangle shape to show where the branches have sort of divided. Okay, so a bit like those, well, those of you who were here last week, we did the blossom trees, we divided branch into sort of Y shapes. Do you remember those of you who were here? Okay, well, you can't get this bit wrong, guys, so don't worry, just go with, with however it turns out, because branches are all natural, so they're all different from each other. No two branches are the same. Right, now we're gonna draw the bottom branch here. Okay, so go back to your starting place. And we'll say, like, from that same line that you just drew, we're going to draw a more of a um, sort of diagonal one, diagonal branch, which goes down. Again, across the other side, you can make it 
doesn't have to reach to the end. In fact, I'm going to stop mine a little bit short at the end. So it's not exactly the same size as that one. Sorry, I don't know what happened there. Okay, and then again, we're going to follow the branch again for this one underneath. Going narrower as you get towards the end. I'm going to split this one off just here. Beginning to look more branch like now. And then I'm going to carry on following that line all the way to the end, getting narrower and narrower. And the other one as well. Okay. So I've got my basic branch shapes. I'm going to add actually some more little branches, but a bit later on. Okay, some more sort of tweaks and things. How are we all doing? All okay? Thanks, Georgia. How are you doing? Lola, you okay? Nice to see you. You all look very, very busy. Right, are you ready to start drawing some birds? Okay, now these little birds, they both got quite basic shapes to them and they're super, super easy to draw, I promise you. Okay, they look quite complicated, but actually they're really easy. I'm going to draw this one first of all. Now I like to have them looking at each other because these ones are a sort of mummy and a baby bird. I want them looking at each other, okay? I don't, you can't have them looking at separate directions. That's absolutely fine. They probably don't, don't look very friendly when they're like that. So they're gonna be facing each other, okay? Now I'm gonna start off by drawing. If you wanna watch first of all, and then you can do it afterwards and you've seen, I'm gonna start drawing an egg shape, which is quite apt since it's a bird. So I'm going to start drawing. I'm going to use what I call hairy lines. Now, hairy lines are like sketchy lines. So um, they're quite light, they're quite feathery, but they're also, um, they're not sort of definite lines, if that makes sense. I'm going to draw, you can sort of see it, they're quite sketchy there. A little egg shape. Can you see that? So it's a bit fatter at the bottom here, and it's a little bit narrower as it gets up towards where the head's going to be. Make it a little bit more. So I'm going to rub some of these lines out. That's why they've got, you've got to press quite lightly because I will be rubbing out some of these lines. Okay. When is it the shape of a baked bean? Well, that's actually fine. That's okay. It's kind of like, as long as it's like oval shaped with sort of maybe a slightly smaller one end to it. It looks more like a seed, like a bean okay. seed or something. You can make them really fat birds if you want. You don't, they don't have to be um, long and thin. They can be fat. And chubby. Okay, so this is the, the basic shape of my first bird, okay, the mummy bird. All right, do you want to have a go at drawing that? Don't worry about tails or legs or beaks or eyes or anything like that at the moment. We're just going to focus on the shape of the bird, okay? And if you want to, you can start work on the little baby bird next to it. If you've done the big bird. Do you need bird. to leave a gap between the bird and the branch for the little feet? That's actually a really good point. I haven't left a gap from this one here. Um, I'm going to do this one maybe sitting down. But yes, you could do. I left a gap for these ones here. So it's slightly just hovering just above the branch. Can you see that? Not very much, but just a little bit. It depends on whether you want them sitting down on the branch or um, standing. You can choose. I might do my baby bird standing up though. Okay, so I'm going to draw the baby bird now. So I'm going to do another egg shape. This is obviously going to be a bit smaller and it's going to be facing the other way. So it's facing towards his mum. So keep them, sorry, keep the lines quite, quite hairy, quite feathery. It's actually quite a little one, keep them a bit bigger. It's actually quite chubby as well, this one. Fluffy. Okay. Okay, let's see. Oh, Annabelle showing me hers. That's a fantastic start, Annabelle. Brilliant. Really good. If you want to show me yours, you can do. Hold them up to the camera. Lovely, Isla. These are perfect shapes, by the way, guys. Well done. 
They don't really look like birds. They will do, don't worry. They do look like baked beans at the moment, you're right, but they will look like birds, I promise you. Okay. You ready to carry on? Yeah, okay. Let's make it look more like a bird now though. So they're gonna put the tail in this bit here, all right? So I want you to carry on that line that goes on the top of his back here. Here's or her back, I think it's mummy. On the back here. So we're gonna carry on that line there. So it's almost like a straight line going into sort of a little tail at the bottom. Okay. Can you see that? So it's just a, con a continuation of the line of, of his back there. Going down to a little um, tail there, all right? And then take the tail back up to the, to the bird here. So you've got like a little shape, a little square sort of shape there, or triangular shape actually really. And then what you can do My is- My mummy bird looks like a potato. <sighs> I'm sure it'll look like a bird in a second. When we've got when we've got paint and everything else, it'll definitely look more like a bird. Okay, so from this point here, where the tail meets, goes back down and then meets back up towards the bird, that can turn into the wing. So this bit here, right? So we're going to draw a little wing here, and it's about half the size of the bird. So it goes into about into, into right into the middle actually of where the bird is. There, don't forget your feathery lines, your hairy lines. Can you see? So it just kind of goes into the middle of the bird. So we've just drawn this line just here and it's curved, all right? And then we're gonna take this line back up to almost where the back of the bird is. Up, back up to the top there. Hope you can all see that clearly. Yeah, cool. So you've just drawn your wing. And what you can do if you want to, you can rub out that line that's in the middle there that you drew originally. Okay. Mine now looks slightly less like a potato. Good, it definitely will, don't worry. We'll look definitely more like a bird in a minute. <laughs> okay, and now the top bit of the bird. So this bird is actually a blue tit. Okay, and it's baby, the baby blue tit too. So I've obviously done the blue and the yellow because that's the colour of bird. A blue tit is, but you don't have to do a blue tit if you don't want to. You can do robins, you could do all sorts of other colourful birds, you can do imaginary colours, you can work out or do whatever colours you want, okay? Um, but for my bird, he's going to have a little cap on him, like a little a blue head, okay? Is. Yeah? Um, out of my, our parents' window, we have a, a, a tree which is in what we call the fairy garden, and on top of it, we saw two little blue tits. Oh, they're so pretty, aren't they? I love yeah. them. They're really cute. Garden as well. I think they're lovely. I just love the colours. Okay, so if going back to that line there, we're going to make a cap of our bird, or sort of a hat on top of our bird. So this line is going to go across and keep it curved. It's really important you keep this bit curved, not too straight. And that is going to be the top bit, like the, 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 head, the hat that he's wearing almost. Can you see that? You've done really like a wavy line really from the bottom of the tail to draw the wing back to his back and then to underneath his, his beak area. Okay, lovely Isla, that's looking good. Okay, we're gonna add a bit more detail to him in a second, but we're gonna work on our baby bird now. So something similar now with that line. When we said about the line going down the back of him, that's going to be the line where his tail goes, okay? So starting on the back of the baby bird, and do a little line, just continuing down. You don't want any straight lines here, you want to keep them quite curvy. Okay. And the tail almost touches the branch here, actually. Your branch might be in a different place, but it almost touches my, my branch there. Okay. And same as before, but it'll probably be in reverse, obviously, because the birds are facing each other, so you're doing a different direction. You're going to go to the bottom of the tail and into the middle of your bird, like we did before, right into the center of that shape, and then back towards his back or the back of his neck, and then underneath his chin or his beak. So sort of reverse of what you've done before, okay? Hopefully you can all see that. I'm gonna rub out those lines we don't need. If you rub out the lines you don't need as you go along, you'll get less confused. 
there are lots of lines there. Okay, so we've got our two basic shapes of our birds now, hopefully. Well done, guys. Okay. Now, when you're ready, let's put the legs and the eyes on now, okay? And the beaks, obviously. So, go back to our mummy bird. I'm going to put my eye just above that line that I drew for his cap, her cap, sorry, here. And it's a perfect circle. Perfect circle just there. So it's just sitting above that line there. Again, it depends what bird you're doing. You might not, not, might not have a cap on yours. And then a tiny little triangle is his beak. A really tiny little triangle. I'll hold it up so you can see, so it's closer. Hopefully you can see that. So actually that triangle almost joins up with that line there. Well done guys. See, they're super easy to draw, aren't they? Okay. My one, this one hasn't got any legs. Well, she has got legs, but she's sitting down. So I'll leave that one. I'm gonna put a little beak and an eye on the baby one now. So a little, same again, a little circle. Where his eye is gonna be. And then exactly the same, a little triangle for his beak. Just there. And this one has got little legs. These are two little lines, okay? If I'm going too quickly, please do let me know, won't you? We're gonna start with a painting shortly. Okay. Okay, let's start with the painting, guys. If you get your paints ready, we're gonna be painting the birds first of all. So work out what colors you want your birds to be and um, we will get going. Now the main shape, sorry, the main, the base color of your bird is gonna be done in paint, okay? The detail and the, um, the dark areas and the textured areas are gonna be put on with coloring pencil, all right? So you don't have to worry at this stage about doing um, lots of different shades of one color to do the bird. We're gonna add, see these areas here, for example, up here, they're all done with coloring pencil. So I did a pale sort of blue area with paint and then I just added the darker, colors using crayon later on and the same underneath here as well okay I did a main sort of just one sort of yellow wash and then I added color on top with color and crayon okay so just so you know so you don't have to mix loads of different colors to make the birds with the paint I'm actually going to grab one slightly smaller brush because it's got too big one second okay sorry I'm back okay let's get started so as I said, I'm going to start, I'm going to do the same as I did for before with the blue tips. But again, you don't have to do if you don't want to. So pop your brush into your water. Scrape off any excess water you don't need. You don't want it dripping wet, you just want it slightly wet. What is the size that we should use? Because I'm not sure if I should use a big brush or a small brush. Well, all brushes are different sizes depending on, on who they're made by. I've got a size four here. So if you've got a four, that's good. Or a six is good. Um, yeah, that's fine. I wouldn't go any bigger than a six. Is this good? Um, what size is that? Sorry, I can't see where you are. Size four. Four is perfect. Right, okay, so pop your brush onto the colour you want. Mix it onto your palette so you've got the right colour. You can mix two colours together if you'd rather. You don't have to just use one colour. I'm just using this sort of, um, it's called cadmium yellow, so it's quite a nice bright yellow for his tummy. Okay. And I'm not going to wet the page first of all. I'm just going to go straight on to dry paper, okay? So I'm just going to fill in basically his body with yellow paint with sort of short, sharp brush marks. So you don't want to sort of, you want to try to obviously stay within those lines, but short, sharp brush strokes because obviously you're painting feathers, aren't you? So they're quite soft and delicate. And think about the way or the direction that the feathers would grow as well. Do they grow side to side? Do they grow up and down? Think about the direction that they would grow on your bird. Okay. Now it's quite a good idea as well to leave a little bit of the area white, just to show some of the paper underneath coming through. And it just adds a little bit of um, light tone to it as well. 
Okay. If you want to build that with different yellows, if you're doing a blue tick, you can do. You might have a slightly darker yellow perhaps on your palette. You might want to mix that in as well. I've got a nice golden color actually here. I'm going to mix that in as well, just a little bit, just to give it a bit of interest. It's not all one color. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, by the way. Can I do a purple tummy in like a, like a turquoisey body? Sounds amazing. Sounds like a proper trop tropical bird, that one. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. While I've got that same colour, I'm going to do it on the baby bird as well. So in the same area, just on his tummy for now. Tiny little brush strokes. Can you do a different colour for the baby bird? Yeah, of course, yep. You can do it however you want to, it's your painting. So I'm gonna keep a tiny little bit of it white. I mean, not very much on the baby bird because he's so tiny anyway. I've tried to keep a little bit lighter. You can see on the mummy bird, I've left some of her tummy a little bit lighter there. If you feel like you put too much paint on, a little trick is to get a bit of tissue paper and just dab it, okay? So it just lifts the paint off. And also it gives it a nice texture, as you know, if you've done this before with me. I just use my finger. You could use your finger, that's fine. Try not to smudge it too much with your finger. Okay. It also helps to dry it a bit as well if it's slightly, um, if you dab it with the tissue paper. Okay, I want you to make sure it is completely dry or dabbed with the tissue paper before you work onto your, um, the blue bit, okay, the wing. Because otherwise all the colours will bleed together, which is sometimes really effective with watercolour, but you might not want that effect from the birds, okay? You might want to have a bit of definition between the two coloured areas. So I'm going to pop my brush back in the water and make sure there's no more yellow on it. And then pop it onto my blue paint. Just mix it on my palette, the colour I need. You can see there, so it's not very much of it. It just goes a long way. And then again, I'm just going to put the um, paint onto the bird in the direction that the feathers would grow. So same as before. So imagine you were stroking the bird and sort of work out which way you would stroke the bird, which direction. You want to make sure that the brush strokes are going that way. Okay, so just go around the eye really carefully. You might want to pull a slightly darker blue, so just like dropping a little bit more pigment, a bit more paint into some of the areas to make it a little bit darker in some areas if you wanted to. I might make his wing a little bit darker than the top of his head. I'll just add a little bit more blue paint, just the top edge of his wing. I don't know if you can see that. And because it's wet underneath, it should just blend in nicely, bleed in nicely with the rest of the blue wing. Might be a bit of darker on this top of the head as well. There we go. It doesn't matter if you've got raggedy edges, by the way, to this, because obviously birds have got feathers and they have tiny little sort of, they're quite fluffy really, aren't they? So it doesn't matter if it's not completely clean line there. If it's got raggedy edges, that's absolutely fine. It just adds, adds to the, um, the texture and the detail, which I think is quite nice. Okay, I'm just going to go around this eye really carefully with the very tip of my brush. We're going to, um, with our black fine liner later, we're going to make the eye nice and black and bead-like. Okay. So I've done mummy bird, let me do the other one. The baby bird. Same again, tiny little brush strokes. Just be careful of his eye. It doesn't matter too much if you go over the eye, because if we're gonna, we're going to put a fine line on top, so we can always block that in a bit, so don't worry too much. Okay. Is everyone okay? Hopefully you are. I'm just gonna have a look at you all. Liz. Hello. I've put purple with like a turquoise colour in my mummy bird, but I don't want know what to put because I've got like a indigo sort of colour. Yeah. Like an indigo blue colour. Yeah. Good. 
that colour and the tummy of the baby bird, but I don't know what to do for like the head and the wings because I don't know what colour to go with. Maybe pick out one of the colours you've used on the mummy bird to sort of tie it in, maybe. So they're sort of matching, but not. That might be quite cool. Maybe because then the daddy bird could have the, it could be from the daddy bird that he got the blue tummy. Yeah, exactly. Perfect idea. I love it. Or it could be completely different from mummy bird. It doesn't have to be the same. Okay. If you want to just dab the blue a bit, if you feel it's a bit too wet, you can do. I think mine's drying. It's quite warm in here today, so it's actually okay. I've got the fire going, so it's quite hot. Okay. Okay. Right, guys, we're going to paint the branch next. So you'll need your size six or four brush again. Decide what colour you want your branch to be. It could be brown, it could be green, it could be white. You can keep it white if you want to. Um, it could be black. Up to you. You choose what colour you want your branch to be. I'm going to make mine a brown colour. I might put a bit of grey in it as well, actually. In fact, I'm going to do brown and grey together. Okay. So again, we're painting onto dry paper and we're just going to pop our paint all the way along, colouring it in all the way along the branch. I'm going to use brown, and, um, as I said, brown and grey together, but I'm going to use them sort of simultaneously. So I'm sort of not mixing them together with my palette, I'm mixing them on the paper. So I'm going to do a bit of grey and then my next brush stroke will be brown. Try and mix them in that way. And then you get the nice bleeding and blending of the colours. All the way up to the edge. And don't, if you have got masking tape, paint over it, go right up to the edge onto the masking tape. That's what it's there for. Then when you come to peeling it off later, you get a lovely crisp line. And if you, I'll tell you how to remove the masking tape later without ripping the paper. But if you have got a hairdryer, it makes it super easy. I'll show you how later. Okay. So I've got a mixture of brown and grey on the top branch. Let me do the bottom branch as well now. If you want to, you can do some um, tiny little branches as well. Oh, sorry, what colours am I using for? Sorry, Zanti, one second. For the branch, I'm using a grey and I'm using a brown. My brown is called raw umber, so it's kind of, it's sort of a, quite an earthy brown. It's quite sort of a muddy brown. It's not a reddy brown, but you can choose if you want to use a reddy brown, that's fine, any brown really. I'm just mixing mine together to get a bit of variation really. So that's these two colours, the ones I'm using in the bottom left-hand side of my palette, don't you can see. You'll all have different palettes, so you'll all have different um, browns, depending on the box you've got or the set. So I'm just going to take, while I've got my um, the tiny little tip of my brush here, I'm going to do some little tiny wispy little branches just coming off, little twigs, just coming off the end of my big branch there. Actually, you probably can't see that, it's very, very pale. There, can you see that? So just, I'm just using really delicately, just the very, very tip of my brush, the sort of very, very pointy end, and just very lightly, hardly putting any pressure on it at all to create these very delicate um, twigs. Okay. You can rub out your pencil lines, but we'll do that a bit later on, okay? If you feel your pencil lines are a bit dark, like mine are, I'll rub those out when the paint's completely dry. Okay. I'm gonna add a little bit of darkness to my branch. Can you see in the top layer here, I've added a little bit of, um, it just makes it look more 3D as well if I'm putting a little bit of darker paint on the top level or bottom level actually if you want shadow underneath. But you, alternatively, you can add this with a colored pencil later on because actually colored pencil on watercolor paper looks really nice because you have that lovely texture from the paper and um, the, pe the pencil seems to really lend itself well to creating like a rough texture on the watercolour paper. So we can have a go with that later on. Okay. Add a 
little bit of dark up here as well. And this one. Rinse my brush. Okay, how's everyone doing? Well done. We're gonna do the background shortly guys, okay? So just make sure your birds are completely dry before you work on the background. So again, just dab it with a bit of tissue paper if you're not 100% sure, or just with your finger. It should be dry, the birds should be dry now. No, I do my background on like a different bit of paper and then like transfer the, like cut the birds out and stick them on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you could do that, no problem. I'm gonna do pa uh, painting today. I'm not doing any sticking today, but um, you're very welcome to do that. That's a, that's a great idea. Right, so for the background guys, oh, my paintbrush is falling apart. That's not really good, is it? Okay, fixed. <laughs> <coughs> So what we're going to do for background is we're going to paint it first of all just with water. Those of you who've done watercolor with me before know how to do this um, and then we're going to drop the colors on top. Now if you can see from mine here I made it so that it was different um, tones in different areas. I haven't done it all one color. I've made it look quite cloudy. I've gone quite dark up this way here and a bit dark in this corner and this corner actually as well and a bit lighter around where the birds are. So we're going to be doing that as well by adding just different, um, just by layering on paint, okay, to make it darker in some areas. I hope that makes sense to one. So you can does choose, that, oh, hello? Does that have to be cloudy or can it be like a pale blue? Yep, pale blue sounds great. However you want to do it. I'm just gonna close the window slightly because it's got all the sun coming in, which is lovely, but it's creating a bit of a dappled effect on my, is that better? Hang on, I don't know where the sun's coming in now. There we go, is that better? Hopefully you can see that. So, okay, first things first, we're going to wet the paper first of all, okay? So as before, pop your brush in the, oh, use a bigger brush this time. I've got a um, size eight here. So slightly bigger, it's a bit chunkier to do the background, so it's a bigger area. So with your water, just sorry, with your brush, dip it into the water, scrape off any excess water, and then just dab it onto, you're going to just wet with water, just the background, okay? Being careful not to go too, well, on to, basically try and avoid the birds. You don't want to get the birds wet. Okay, so I'm just popping water in and around the birds. It's difficult to see because obviously it's clear, so you can't see it that clearly with the water, but just give it a go in between them as well. It'll be shiny, obviously, when it's wet. So do the top half and the bottom half at the same time so you get the same colours. So just the water, first of all. Just putting it on. Just the water. Okay, and we need to work while it's still wet. So we need to work quite quickly this bit. So that the colors all then blend in. Let's have a go. Okay, so it should be slightly glossy your paper now because it's wet with water. Don't forget these underneath the birds as well by their tails. Okay. You won't be able to see anything on mine yet because it's just water. Right, what I'm going to do next, I'm going to pick out uh, my colour for my background. Now I'm going to choose, I like it when it's like a grey bluey colour here, this one here, it's like quite a stormy colour. And the way I do that is I mix a blue, I'm going to mix it on my palette so you can see, a blue, this one here. Oops, hang on. Mix with a bit of brown. Now I know you think brown for sky, really, yeah. It makes a really nice kind of stormy bluey colour like a grey blue colour. Can you see that? So it's a bit of brown and a bit of blue mixed together. Have a go if you want to. If you want to do just blue, you can do, up to you. And then just pop that, just dabbing it on to your paper. Moving around a bit. Hang on. Just play around with it really and just sort of just put it on really sort of nice and quickly, nice and swiftly. Maybe concentrate on the corners a bit more if you want those areas a bit darker. Watercolour dries very differently to when you put it on. So when you first put it on, you think, oh, that looks quite nice. <laughs> well, sometimes it doesn't look so nice when you put it on, but actually it dries very differently. So just be aware, it might not dry as you put it on. I'm just dabbing it on right now, up to the edge of the birds, really carefully if you can. 
in between the two of them. Might want to use a slightly smaller brush to get in the middle of them actually. We'll just be really careful with a big brush. Okay. And as I said earlier, make sure you work on the top and the bottom at the same time so you get a, a balanced, equal sort of even looking sky in the background. Okay, you don't want to have two different looking at, um, backgrounds. Okay, let's mix some more. Bit. In a minute, I'm going to dab this with some tissue paper to create some um, nice sort of cloudy effects while it's still wet. So I'm literally just dabbing it on. I'm not really brushing it at all. I'm just literally. Sorry, I can't talk and paint at the same time. <laughs> they go right up to those branches. You can actually paint over those tiny little twigs, they'll still show through. If your paint's watery enough, it'll still show through. more colour. I'm just going to go a bit darker here now. So as it dries, you can layer up a little bit more colour on top if you want to. Watercolour dries lighter than when you first put it on. And it, as you've seen as well, it moves around a lot as well as watercolour. Okay. I've kept some areas a little bit white as well. Now with my tissue, while it's still wet, I'm just going to take away some of the paint areas around the birds. Just by dabbing it, it just lifts up some of the paint and it also creates a bit of a cloudy effect as well. I might well put some more paint on top of this as well if I, if I think it needs to get a bit darker, but just see how you feel with it. I do love the effect of the tissue paper on the on um, force colour. It's really effective. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit darker in the corners actually up here. I'm going to make the paint a little bit stronger, so a little less water and a little bit more paint. Don't hold these up to show me um, at the moment, guys, because the paint will run, okay? So just wait till they're a bit drier before you show me. When are we going to use the pencils? Oh, in a second, actually. When when we've done the background, the sky, we're then going to put our colouring pencils onto the birds, okay? So that's the next stage. You're ahead of the game, you are. We're going to do the fine liner as well in a minute. Okay, just gonna dab it again. When you do dab it, just be careful you don't put any of the gray marks on top of your birds. Keep them out of the way. Okay, so now I've got quite a nice sort of textured background. And as you can see, I've gone over the masking tape as well, but that's not to worry because I can just peel that off later. Can you see that? And you can still see it's a bit wet because it's quite shiny still. You can see that. Okay, how are we all doing? Good, good. Let me know when you're ready to move on to the um, color pencil stage, which is the next bit, and then we will get cracking. These birds actually are a really good thing to do for Easter cards as well. Easter's not far away. So if you want to, you can do, you can, yeah, transform into Easter cards or Easter pictures. I meant to say to you too as well, if you want to put little leaves on your twigs, you can do little green leaves. I'm not going to do that today because I'm not going to have time, but if you want to do that a bit later, you can. You can put them on with paint or you can put them on with um, colouring pencil, however you want. Okay. I'm just going to give it a couple more seconds so everyone can... Make sure that they're right at the right stage before we move on. If you are waiting, do you want to get your colour pencils out ready and, and think of the colours you might want to put on top of your bird? So think about the darker colours. 
You might want to put on a bit of color perhaps. Well done, Flo. I'm ready. Well done. All right, okay. I'm just gonna explain what we're gonna do next, guys. So those of you who are ready, we can move on if that's okay. So I'm gonna pick out a nice dark blue for my um, blue tit. Okay, I'm gonna do the back, the feathers on his back here, like I showed you before. So with my pencil, just make sure the background's a little bit dry, a bit drier. Just gonna dab it quickly so don't make it smudged. Okay, just be careful you put your hand in case it's still wet. So just along the back, of my blue tip here, I'm just going to put a darker bluey area. Now, as I said before, you're drawing a bird who's got tiny little fluffy feathers, so little tiny little lines to represent the feathers, okay? You don't want any sort of hard lines, you want lots of soft lines. Imagine you're sort of doing quite like little flicky lines, actually. Think about the texture of the bird, all the way down to his tail. There might be slightly longer lines actually in his tail because the feathers are slightly longer in this tail, aren't they? And I might put a bit of darker area around his eye. Looks like he's got a bit of a black eye right now, but <laughs> I'll make him look a bit better in a minute. Okay, and I'm actually going to overlap. I don't know if you've seen on my one I did before. Here, I put a bit of pencil overlapping onto the yellow bit there. So a few of the feathers. So it's not such a harsh line between the two colors. And I've just sort of just kind of just really gently put a few little like flicky lines there with my color pencil. Just to kind of blend those two areas together a bit more really. And I'm going to do the same along the rest of his wing as well, trying to blend it in a bit. Tiny little lines. Maybe underneath his wing too. Okay, I'm going to do the same with the little baby bird. Tiny little lines going across his back. You can try experimenting with different colors, but just because I'm using blue doesn't mean you need to use blue. I might put a bit of green on this one actually as well. In a second, if you agree. Is. Yes, hi. I got these really cool pencils. Yeah. For my birthday. And so basically, if you leave them in water for about 10 seconds, when they come out, they're kind of like watercolor pencils. Are they? I love those. As in, like, you can paint with them. And I accidentally put them in my water because I was thinking it was a brush. And now, and then I put it on, and now I kind of have like a like a painty blue bit on the edge of my thing. Don't worry, I think those pencils have worked really well with this project. Actually, I think it'd be really nice. You don't have to, so if you were to dry them just with a bit of tissue, just use the end of your brush, sorry, end of your pencil and a bit of tissue, just dry your, your watercolour pencil. Um, these are watercolour pencils too. In fact, lots of you probably got these. They've got a little paintbrush on them. Can you see? They're called Caron Dash ones. And you, as soon as you put water on them, they turn into watercolour paint, basically. But you can use them either way, really. You can have them dry as a colouring pencil, or if you dip them in water, they turn into watercolour paint. Um, yeah. This I don't think is the same as yours because it's by a different company, but it does have a little, it does have a little paintbrush on it. Pencil companies make um make those pencils. Yeah, you just gonna be careful because when you put when you make it in when you make it wet at the end of it, the colours get much more intense, which means much stronger. So you might not want them as dark. Or mm. as so, I'm gonna blend some of the things. Yeah, they're really easy to blend. I think. Okay, I'm going to put a bit of colour now onto the chest, onto the tummies of the birds. So I'm going to use um, an orangey colour. I did this on this one actually, and I like the effect. So can you see I've used a bit of orange, and I've literally, if I hold up close, can you see that? I've literally just put a block of different colours on there with my colouring pencil. So let me find my orange, if it is. And it just, again, again gives it a little bit more interest. I'm just going to do it down the, sort of the front part of his chest, first of all. And again, can you see the, what I'm doing with my pencil? Just lots of tiny little lines. I'm not colouring it in. I'm just drawing tiny little lines. 
my art teacher when I was at school used to say to me, you don't color with coloring pencils, you draw with coloring pencils. So what she meant was that you are just draw it as, as if you were with a normal drawing pencil, you'd be using your color pencil in the same way. Okay, so she, I thought that was quite a good description of it. It's just like a colored pencil as opposed to a coloring pencil. Does that make sense? It does make you use coloring pencils a little bit in a different way, actually. We just draw, we're just basically just drawing with this colored pencil right now. I don't know if you can see that, it hasn't turned out very dark on the camera, but it's a little bit orangey. The same on the baby bird. Lots of tiny little lines, represent little feathers. I'm going to add a bit of green as well. I'm going to add a bit of green to his head. So I'm doing it a bit differently to my other one now. Like a greeny blue colour. But putting um, pencils on top of watercolour, I think it's really effective because when people say, oh, we're doing watercolour, but actually mixing two different mediums together can be really quite effective. It just gives you lots more opportunities to try different things as well. And pencils and watercolour work really well together. Okay. Hope you're all okay. Okay. Finances have rolled into the pool. If you're ready, I'm going to show you how to do the black fine liner now. My um, pencil doesn't work on it. Does it not? Is it because the paper's still wet? Is the paint still wet underneath? No. Oh, um, who's that? Let me see. Sorry, who's speaking? Me. Who's me? <laughs> Let's have a look. Me. Emily. Hi, Emily. Um, I don't know why that's not working. Can you just pop your camera on so I can see your picture? If you're happy to, thank you. It's looking beautiful, by the way. I wonder why. Is it, were you using watercolour paints before? Sorry, watercolour pencils before, Emily? Hmm. I'm not sure why that is. Don't worry too much, because we can add the detail with a bit of um, black fine liner if you've got one of those. Have you got one of those, Emily? Okay. Right, with your black fine liner, guys, you're going to draw the eye in. Now it's really important that you keep a tiny little white circle inside the eye, okay? So make it, because it's, it's like um, the shiny bit of the eye, you want to have a, have a nice shiny eye. So what I would do is I would draw with my fine liner a black circle, or white circle, sorry, inside the one I've already done, inside the eye that I've already done. Okay, and then I'm just gonna fill in around the outside of that with black fine liner. So you've got a lovely black beady eye. Can you see that with a white light, uh, sorry, white circle in the middle? I hope you can all see that. Suddenly they look alive when they've got their eyes, don't they? Can everyone see that okay? And I'll do the same to Baby Bird too. Obviously his eyes are a little bit smaller, so you've got to be a little bit more careful with that one. So draw your circle first of all, and then very carefully, Keep the white circle in the middle. Hope you can all see that. I kind of did it so that the white is on like the outside and the black's in the middle. That's okay. That's absolutely fine. Depends on which way the light's shining. That's okay. And then with this little um, triangular beak, you're just going to very, very carefully draw little lines. I haven't blocked it in completely black. I'm just going to show you close up. I've done tiny little lines filling in that space. Is that, is that close enough? Can you see that? Good. And then on the little baby bird too, tiny little line, just because it's not then solid black. Sometimes it's solid black, it might look a little bit too heavy. And then round the outside of my bird, I'm just gonna do little feathery black lines. In fact, if I hold it up close, you can see it better probably. If I hold it up here and do it close up. Okay, so I'm gonna do little black feathery lines going down the back. 
again it makes it a bit more fluffy as well. Can you see that? It's not very, it doesn't show up very well, does it? Hopefully you can see it. And then just on his head as well, little fluffy lines. And then maybe down the edge of his wing a bit as well, just to define his wing area. Keep saying his, her, it's a mummy bird. I'm going to go down his tummy, her tummy as well. A little black line, just little feathery lines. You don't want a solid black line because it'll be too harsh. You want little feathery lines, hairy lines again, just down the edge. Okay. And same on baby bird too. Little feathery lines. And with the baby bird, this one on mine is actually standing up. So I'm going to give little black legs there. Huh? And then three little, um, uh, what claws? Are they claws on a bird? Uh, toes? Anyone know? They're gripping onto the branch. You can see that. There. Like forks. Mummy bird's sitting down, she's having a rest. Actually, I think I might put a few feet sticking out the bottom of mummy bird, otherwise she looks like she's gonna fall off the branch. So what I'm gonna do, rather than doing legs on mummy bird, I'm gonna do just the feet, just the toes. Claws. One there. One there. That's better. Actually, it's actually not gonna to topple off. Now, on this one here, I put a little blue collar on him, like a little blue um, stripe just underneath his beak area. I think you can see that there. I'm going to do the same with colouring pencil to pick up my blue colouring pencil again. I did it with paint on this one, actually, but I think I'm going to do it on with pencil for this one. So I'm going to give him a little blue kind of collar area here, just with my pencil. Colouring, that sort of shape. And I might give the baby a little one as well, opposite direction. Like that. Looking good, Flo? You can hold that to show me, guys, if you want. We're going to do a little bit more work on the branch in a second, but if you want to show me what you've done so far, I'd love to see them. Lovely, Isla. Lovely, Georgia. That's amazing. For your first attempt at watercolour, that's very impressive. Thank you. Let's see, Barnaby's looking, looking lovely as well. Really good. The Villanella, Yolanda, lovely. Love the colours on yours. Beautiful. Thanks, ladies. Let's see, Sanders. Sanders. Love them. Has anyone done any other, apart from blue, blue tits, anyone done anything else? I think, was it Charlotte did one, I think. Charlotte did a purple one, I think. Well done, guys. Okay, with my brown pencil, I'm going to add a little bit of colour to the branch now, a bit of texture to the branch. You know, we talked about it earlier on. So I'm going to, because my paper's quite rough, it's a rough watercolour paper. And when I put my um, colouring pencil on, it just gives that lovely, sort of like almost like bark texture. You know, like you used to do um, bark rubbings, perhaps when you were smaller, or tree rubbings. This is a similar sort of thing, where you press really lightly with your pencil, and you kind of get the texture of the paper coming through. You can press darker as well if you want to go darker. I'm just going in the direction, so I'm going in that direction, the direction of the branch, and just adding a little bit of interest to the branch, so it doesn't look so sort of, um, well, just make it a bit more interesting, really. You might want to do a slight shadow, perhaps, underneath each, each bird. A slightly dark area underneath each bird. 
So really sort of quite sketchy, quite light. So you want to draw some more twigs in at this stage with your brown pencil, if that's what you were doing. What to do, you can do. I'm just drawing, I'm just drawing these with the pencil rather than painting them. I might just do the odd sort of twig kind of coming out mid-branch as well. Just to, again, just to make more interesting. More realistic as well. So now you can see the branch is becoming more defined. You can sort of see more of it. And as I said, you can also, if you want to, you can add, um, you can add leaves if you want to. I'm not going to do that today, but you can do that with your coloring pencils a bit later on if you want to. Okay. And I think we are very nearly done. If you want to carry on adding a little bit more color to your birds, perhaps, or a bit more fine liner, maybe to your branch. I'm not going to add fine liner to my branch because I want to keep it quite rough looking. I'm going to keep it with a, with a pencil for now. Okay. We're almost at the end of our session, guys, but I'm go just going to peel off my um, masking tape. For those of you who've got masking tape, if you have got a hairdryer, uh, it's much, much easier to peel off with a hairdryer once you've heated it up because the glue that's used on the masking tape, it sort of melts a bit and it's much easier when it's hotter. Um, to peel off. If it's, if it's dry and cold, it kind of tends to rip the paper a little bit. So if you have got a hairdryer, what I would do is I'll stay, if you stay on the call, and I will show you how to do that with a hairdryer if you are, um, if you have got masking tape. Okay, if you haven't, and your painting is completely dry, you can use your rubber to rub out any marks, you do, any pencil marks you don't want anymore. So perhaps around the shape of the bird, or around the trees, um, around the branches, you can rub out any bits you don't want. Okay. Let me see, before I um, take the tape off, let's see if anyone wants to hold up their work. I'm going to put you all on gallery view so you can all see each other's as well. Can everyone see each other's now? If you can. These are looking really good, guys. Wow, so good. Well done, everyone. I'm so impressed. Thank you.